Happy Wednesday. Um, so a couple of things today. We're going to take a um, short, quick notes today, and then after that, there is a formative assessment for you to do on its learning. We ask that you have this formative assessment done before Friday because there's going to be another one for Friday. Um, and then also looking ahead to next week, we have a test schedule for next week um, on Thursday and Friday, Saturday and Sunday of next week. Okay. All right. So let's dive into the quick notes today. So first thing is recalling what the absolute value um, of a of a number means. Okay. And that the absolute value of a number is the distance a number. is from zero on a number line. Okay. So when we're thinking about it, if I had a number line here and the main number that I cared about was zero, Okay. So if I had negative 3 there, well, negative 3 is 3 units away from 0 on the number line, but also positive 3 is 3 units away from 0 on the number line. Okay. So an absolute value goes in both directions, in the positive direction and in the negative direction. Okay? So we've got to know that. And the way that we go about solving these absolute value equations is if we've got, I like to call it the insides of the absolute value, and that's going to equal, we'll call it the right side for now. Okay? So how we go about solving that is we take the inside of an absolute value or of the absolute value and we set it equal to the positive right side. We do that equation, we solve it, we get a number, we get an answer. Okay? Then we take the inside and we set it equal to the negative of the entire right side. And that's going to get us that second value on the negative side of things. Okay? We'll get into that as we go a little bit more here into some examples today. Okay? So if I have the absolute value of 5, what that's telling me is, is then that x is going to equal 5 or negative 5 okay? on either side of 0. 5 and negative 5 are both 5 units away from 0 on the number line. Okay? Now, when I tweak that uh, to an inequality that involves an absolute value, again, my two numbers, I revert back to the equality. I would solve it like it was an equality, find my two key numbers, in this case, it's negative 5 and positive 5. Okay. And then I would have the brakes. Yeah, my, we've got issues going on here today. Okay. So then because we're in a non-equality case, I would have open, whoa, tap the brakes. We're way off in the middle. My caramba. I would have open circles at both of those. And what this is telling me is I'm going to shade away from the middle because I want my absolute value to be bigger, I want that distance to be bigger than in the middle, okay? or than, than 5, I should say. We can also write that in interval notation. And 
there it is in interval notation. Okay. Again, over here, now I do have an equality part, so I'm going to fill in my dot. And now I want that distance to be smaller than 5, so that's going to be towards each other right there. And then because we have the equality part, we would have switch to brackets, and it would be from negative 5 to positive 5 on both of those. Yep. Let's get into a little bit more with a little bit more algebraic type of one. Okay. So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, this is 2x minus 1 equals 5. I'm going to treat it like it was an equality. And then I'm going to say 2x minus 1 equals negative 5. And I'm going to solve both of those to find my two key numbers. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. That's going to give me 2x equals 6. Divide both sides by 2, and that's going to give me x equals 3. Okay. Then I go to the other one, add 1 to both sides. That gives me 2x equals negative 4. Divide both sides by 2. Oops. Dividing both sides by 2 gives me x equals negative 2. So those are my two key numbers. So I'm going to go to a number line for those. I'm going to put those two key numbers, smaller one on the left, bigger one on the right. Okay. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at my inequality and I'm going to say, hey, that's a that's a Full off. Okay? So because that doesn't, ah, now it looks like an equal sign. I carumba lens mine. Okay? So, anyway, so because that is a, a non equals part, these are going to be open circles here and here. Because the alligator is eating the absolute value, um, that means I want the, that distance to be bigger than 5. So I'm going to go to the outsides with it. Okay. In interval notation, then that would become from negative infinity to negative 2, union with 3 to positive infinity. And that then, ladies and gentlemen, is the solution to that absolute value inequality. Another one, again, treat it as if it were an equal sign. So we have x minus 5 all divided by 4 equals 6. And then we have x minus 5 all divided by 4 equals negative 6. And so here I would multiply this entire equation here by 4, and that would give me x minus 5 equals 24, add 5 to both sides, I get x equals 29. Once again, then go to the second one, multiply everything by 4. This time now I get x minus 5 equals negative 24, adding 5 gives me x equals negative 19. Those are the two numbers then that I'm going to add into my number line. Negative 19 and positive 29. This one has an equals component to it. Okay. So that's going to be filled in dots at those two locations.
This one, we want the distance, that absolute value distance here to be smaller than six. So I'm going to shade to the inside of both things. And again, we can always test a point in any of those zones and it's either gonna be true or false depending on where we are. For instance, if we tested zero in here, zero should be true. If I plug zero back into my original inequality, zero minus five is negative five. Negative five divided by four is uh, negative 1.25 or negative five fourths. Absolute value would then be 1.25 and that is less than or equal to six. So that works out. And then my interval notation for that would just be bracket negative 19 to 29. Okay. Next one would be a uh, quadratic. So because it's a quadratic, a couple of things to remember. One, we've got multiple ways to solve quadratics. We've got graphing. We've got factoring. We've got completing the square, we've got the quadratic formula, and we learned all of those yesterday and the day before, okay, so we've got those different um, tools in our toolbox, okay, I'm going to treat this just like normal, I'm going to treat this as if it were an equal sign, and so then I'm going to look at that and I'm going to say, well, I think that that one's factorable. And in fact, it is. Factors to be x minus 5 and x plus 2. So then I would say x minus 5 equals 0. So x is equal to 5. And x plus 2 is equal to 0, so x is equal to negative 2. So that gives me my two zeros. Now, the reason I did that is because from my knowledge from Algebra 2 that this right here is an up opening parabola, right? So since that's an up opening parabola, I can make myself a quick graph and that quick graph is going to look like this, where this number here is negative 2, this number here is positive 5. This inequality is basically saying where is this function above 0, where is it bigger than zero? Well, it's bigger than zero over here, and it's bigger than zero over there on those two highlighted areas. So the solution then to this would be from negative infinity all the way up to negative two, that's the left highlighted region right in here, unioned with five to positive infinity. In those two zones, those two highlighted zones, the function is greater than zero. Okay. That's all I have for you today. Um, so there is a P1 through P3 formative that you can take on its learning right now. And then uh, tomorrow there's a video. And then Friday there will be another formative assessment. Okay. Have yourselves a great, grand, and wonderful day.